All right, that took way too long, but you know how it is. We're talking about a decade of the best films ever made. A View to a Kill, right? I, for some reason, the Roger Moore, right? The, the Roger Moore, his final Bond outing. It was a fitting finale for a man who injected the most humor into the James Bond franchise. Dude, Roger Moore was great. Roger Moore was great, bro. I don't want to hear that. Oh, he was the worst Bond. You, you must be, you must be daft. Uh, and yeah, but this, yeah, if you do a kill, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous film. Um, oh, I, I, I never heard this until I read this. Uh, is it a Christmas movie ball fest argument? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a Christmas. Of course, it's a Christmas movie. You know what the hell, man? It takes place in Christmas. Uh. Uh, yeah, John, one of the best action movies ever made. Like I said, I watched this with the uh, uh, a millennial woman, and she she really enjoyed it, uh, and she had never seen it. Uh, for me, it was like, like I said, looking at a time capsule. Okay, the old Los Angeles. Uh, Alan Rickman was great, dude. Wasn't he great? Hans Gruber, <laughs> he's great. Oh man, uh, and the scene with uh, what the hell is that name? That guy's name, the the uh, the wheeler dealer guy. Thinks he's gonna he's gonna wheel and deal. You know, Hans, Booby, eh, and then he gets popped. Everybody loved that scene. You know? Oh, okay, Scarface. Oh, don't, I'm going to start doing uh, a dialogue from Scarface, so I better make this quick. But Al Pacino is freaking great, man. Fucking Tony Montana. Yeah. You, he fucked up. You too, Mel. You fucked up. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Once you get... One of those first class tickets to the resurrection. Oh, here we go. All right, now let's stop. Let's stop. You know what's the problem? You, you, you know what? The problem is you got nothing to do. Right? Why don't you become a nurse? You know, help blind kids, lepers. Oh, uh, we go. All right, I gotta get off the Scarface. <laughs> I saw Scarface at the track of Darrow a couple of years ago, like on the big screen uh, with, with uh, one of my buddies. And man, this film. I keep saying Scarface is a comedy if you watch it now. And I don't mean that in a in a bad way. It's hard to explain it. So and I can't you know, out I, I was called Oliver Stone script, uh, Brian De Palma friggin' uh directed, Giorgio Marauder did the music. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> all right, all right, let me get off that. Raging Bull. This, okay, you know me. I'm probably the, the the biggest Robert De Niro hater you will ever find. The, the one quarter Italian Robert De Niro. Okay, he's more of an Irishman than than any than any uh, Italian. But uh, man, it's a uh, it's a fucking great movie. Okay, shot in black and white, of course. Right, uh, it was great. Uh, it's uh, Joe Pesci's in it, you know. But just like the whole film of of. Uh, essentially playing Jake LaMotta, uh, a yeah, controversial guy. Uh, to me, it was amazing that he was one of those guys who would take a, uh, uh, take punishment. Uh, but he never, until he lived a long time, uh, and he was always sharp as a whip. He never had brain damage, despite all the punches he took. Uh, and this dude, he fought fucking, you know, Sugar Ray, like, you know. You know, you never knock me down, Ray. You, Ray, you never knock me down, Ray. Ray, uh, uh, one of the best pound for pound fighters in in in, in boxing ever, uh, and he f and these guys would fight a lot back then. And I'm talking about boxing more than the movie, but the movies the movies excellent. The movies great. Scorsese is great. So, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, another film that everyone uh, talks about. But I was younger. I was young. I was a you know, I was an, a young exer. So this was a little above my time. Okay, Sean Penn is funny for a change. Spicoli. And Phoebe Cates is absolutely uh, gorgeous in it, okay? Um, but, yeah, not not really a big film for me. I was too young. I was in, like, elementary school, you know? So, the thing. Uh, man, this film, holy crap. Now, you're going to lie. They, show, they used to show this on TV. I first saw this on television where it was edited out the wazoo, okay? But it was a very, very grim film, a right? desolate, bleak. Yeah, you can say psychological horror, but you know the the horror is real. Um, and this, when I finally saw the film, you know, w w like the way it was supposed to be, because I was too young to see this in the theater. Oh my god, the special effects are still uh, amazing. Okay, I'm a big practical effects guy. Now I'm not a CGI guy, so. Um, okay, I remember seeing this. 
I remember it was a Saturday. It was it was at the Whitestone Theater. Okay, um, my first stepfather's family they lived in the Bayside uh, area near Flushing. Uh, we saw this, and I remember uh, it started at nine o'clock at night. And I I remember saying, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't watch this." And my mom's like, "Why?" I says, "I have to go to sleep. It's my bedtime." And she's like, "It's okay." It's Saturday and it's also we're seeing a movie. So I remember seeing this film and holy crap. This was probably the best one. Dark, scary, the rebels are, are getting their asses kicked. I remember the end what happens to Han Solo really freaked me out, man. They put him through the meat grinder in this film. Uh, and I remember saying, okay, they're going to rescue him. And then, no, they don't. And I was like, I was, yeah, this, but this is one of the best ones, man. Of all the 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 three the first three are the best. This is the best of them. Yeah. War games. I saw this. I don't remember a lot about it other than I saw this. I think I saw it twice. Right. And of course, this is the war games. Is is a you know the video games are starting to develop strategy games, but uh, the computer gets confused and wants to do the the game for real with the nuclear weapons. Right. Right. The only winning move is not to play. Right. So mutually assured destruction. Okay. Luckily, we're not facing. Luckily, now you know this is. We don't have to worry about what we were facing in the eighties with the Soviets, with the nuclear annihilation. Even though we were sending, uh, you know, uh, millions of tons of grain to them every year. Okay. Luckily, now we're not. We're not. Uh, you know, in any kind of conflict with a country that has uh, nuclear weapons pointed at us. So, so things are so much better now. Okay. All right. Now, Friday Thirteenth. Mm. I'm not the huge, I'm not the biggest Friday the 13th fan, okay? The, my Bloody Valentine is 10 times better than Friday the 13th, but this was the one that caught on. And so the first one, uh, you know, the, anyway, this is, uh, we're trying to be mainstream here. Flash dance. Remember the, uh, this chick? This was, a, she was, this was the, the woman that was in the, the, the movie The Bride. Remember The Bride? Which is not in, on this list, but... Uh, flash dance. They had the leg warmers. You know, they had that song "Maniac," which they always had on the radio back then. So, but you know, I never saw this. I never saw this. But uh, anyway, oh man, Conan. Now this came out, man. This was a scary movie too. Oliver Stone had a hand in the script again. Okay, um, of course, in hindsight now, reading uh, Robert E. Howard, uh, this is not really Conan. Uh, James, my buddy James had always mentioned that, and he's right. This is not Conan. I'm not saying, uh, you know, uh, Conan was a very clever, cagey dude. And, of course, in this, he's kind of a meathead, okay, you know. Uh, but he has that cool line. I remember that line. He goes, you know, where he prays to Krom. And he goes, you know, I don't know if we'll win today. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, all I know is that, you know, there was a, all I know is that one man fought many. Right? Uh, you know, Krom helped me. And if you don't, then the hell with you. Right? I always liked that line. That was a, a really good line. Now, that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of like me personified, I think. So, uh, uh, we're kind of running, well, anyway, Spinal Tap, okay? Uh, Rob Reiner, Meathead, is a um, is a piece of uh, a filth. He's a he's a stupid a hole, but he did make a good film. Spinal Tap, Spinal Tap is hilarious. I remember I remember Sign Out Live as a kid. Uh, Spinal Tap came on, and I remember I was like Spinal Tap. I never heard of this band because I didn't know it was a, it was a fake band. Right? Uh, Spinal Tap. So they had a whole bunch of songs already, like Christmas with the Devil, all this stuff, Big Bottom. Uh, and I said, wow, that's a real band. And then I think one of the, the, the my neighbor's kids says, that's not, that's a, a fake band. And I go, no, it was real. They were playing their instruments. I saw them on TV because I'm, like, I'm a kid. Whatever I see on TV must be real, right? And he, and he, he basically said, look at the blonde dude. That's the guy from the Vernon Shirley. Okay, that's Lenny. And and I looked, and then, yeah, it was. It was Lenny from Laverne and Shirley. So, anyway. Uh, oh, Dirty Dancing. Remember this one? So, I never saw this because I'm not, you know, this was a movie for women. 
You know, I remember that song, that, that that damn song. I've had the time of my life. Remember? That was a big song, you know, back then. So as I was going into my first year of high school, so, but the Goonies, nah, the Goonies, man, I I didn't like the Goonies. Okay, I guess the Goonies are kind of funny in a way. The fat kid, I mean, the kids are kind of like obnoxious kids. They're they're not like lovable kids. They're kind of like obnoxious. Asshole kids, the friggin' uh, what's his name? Um, the hell, the the kid from who played Sam Wise later is kind of like you know we're the Goonies. Uh, we got it. It's like what the fuck? Shut up, man. I just remember too the, the Chinese kid from uh, Indiana Jones Two is in this, but I'm not a huge fan of the Goonies. Although it's funny watching now when they, when they talk to the Spanish maid and they talk how if they piss her if she pisses them off they're gonna lock her in the basement where she has to eat roaches or something that was kind of <laughs> kind of out of control um oh dude bro these these are the most faint these movies were huge every kid I know we couldn't get enough of these movies man dude the police academy was a huge series growing up as a kid and you don't hear that remember right Lavelle Jones right the, the guy that would make the noise the noises Tackleberry, right? All he, you know, he would pull guns out on like kittens in the tree, right? Let's see, the hyperactive Zed. Which one? Was, Zed was wasn't he uh, Bobcat Goldway? Wasn't he the villain? I'm trying to remember. You had uh, Sweet Chuck, right? Sweet Chuck. <laughs> you had the, the fuck. What was the blonde one? Was it the hot? What's her name? Man? She was hot. Um, and of course, Steve Gutenberg is like kind of like the straight dude. But man, this whole Police Academy was so was great, bro. I remember uh, just as 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 what well, shows you how great the eighties was, where you could have fun, uh, make fun of things, or you know, remember the Blue Oyster Bar? <laughs> they always ended up uh, running into the Blue Oyster Bar, which <laughs> was just fucking hilarious. Oh man! Anyway. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. This was actually good. Yo, Eddie. Eddie was good, man. Eddie Murphy was hilarious, dude. Right? Uh, I don't care, man. He had that cool song, right? Uh, and the synth song. Uh, Beverly Hills uh, Cop was funny. Uh, Evil Dead 2, of course, this was big on... on you know, People saw this mostly on videotape. L- loved this friggin' movie as a teenager. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while. I'm kind of like, I'm preferring the first more grim Evil Dead at this point in my life. But this was, this was, in terms of the horror film, where it was just craziness, uh, hyperactiveness, and Bruce Campbell was like freaking, you know, knocking himself out, throwing himself on the ground. This was, this was, uh, this was a great film. Yeah, I won't, I won't lie, man. Uh, Robocop. Fucking Robocop. Now, the thing of Robocop, man, poof. Uh, th- this is a movie that hits close to home in a lot of ways, uh, in terms of, uh, right, it's as smart as it was bloody, right, this movie is so friggin' violent, uh, Paul Verhoeven, right, is, is, likes to do the, uh, lampoon corporate culture, well, yeah, well, the thing is that between the crime in Detroit, a Detroit which looks far better in this dystopian future than it does for, in reality now, uh, and of course the, the corporate scumbags, the conspiracies, all these things, the police state, okay? the human right, the uh, <laughs> the commercial, the guy, I'll buy that for a dollar, right? Uh, yeah, it's, like, oh Rob Bottin did the freaking special effects, man. Oof, uh, the music by Basil Polidoro. Right? So you see. The, the people, Daniel O'Hurley, of course, the villain from Halloween 3. But he was not, he was actually like the head of the corporation. But anyway, guys, Robocop is kind of, uh, the, the sequels are decent, but Robocop is kind of chilling to watch now uh, in terms of how things are now, okay? And obviously, Robocop himself is, is fine, okay? Robocop is actually very human. That's the whole point of the thing. But anyway, uh, and let's round this out. With this page, uh, it's taking forever. Once upon a time in America, in a two two hundred twenty nine minute epic, great, great film. Uh, James Woods, De Niro, Pesci, you had all these guys in the film. So he only only made this film. He he did this in response to the Godfather. I mean, there's the Manhattan Bridge, uh, Lower East Side, man. That's what all all of us came. All of us New Yorkers, our families came there, whether they were Chinese, Italian. Um, uh, most of the Irish uh, and another other people, right? And this 
is about the mobsters of the time, okay? Uh, but they're not Italian mobsters. Yeah, leave it at that. Anyway, and I'll leave this video at that. This is ta I, we're almost there. We got a bunch to go.